January 21st, 1976. Two planes, one leaving from London's Heathrow Airport and the other from Paris's Orly Airport, simultaneously take flight. The London flight was headed to Bahrain in the Persian Gulf, and the Paris flight was headed to Rio de Janeiro via Senegal in West Africa. What made these flights so memorable was the aircraft. These were the world's first commercial flights on the Concorde aircraft, a plane capable of flying at Mach 2 twice the speed of sound. At their cruising speed, Concords flew well over the sound barrier at 1,350 miles per hour, cutting air travel time by more than half. So a flight from London to New York was shortened to just over three hours, around half the time it took a normal aircraft. The Concorde was a marvel of technology and engineering, poised to revolutionize air travel. But on November 26, 2003, the Concorde embarked on its final flight, and with that, supersonic commercial aviation ceased to exist. Nothing since then has ever been able to match Concorde's revolutionary technology. So what happened? Why did the Concorde stop its operations? Most Boeing 747 planes fit more than 400 passengers, and depending on the airline's configuration, this number can climb up to 500 passengers. This means that all costs incurred for a flight from London to New York can be distributed across 400-plus seats, resulting in cheaper tickets for passengers. Let's illustrate this with fuel. A Boeing 747 consumes about 2,113 gallons of fuel per hour of flight, so on a 7-hour flight from London to New York, this jet burns just under 15,000 gallons of fuel. This amounts to around 37.5 gallons of fuel per passenger seat. Now, compare this to Concorde. A Concorde plane could only seat a maximum of 120 passengers, and the plane's Rolls-Royce engines were notoriously fuel-intensive, as they had to be to support supersonic flight. These engines consumed about 6,770 gallons of fuel per hour of flight. So, on a London to New York flight, the Concorde consumed more than 23,000 gallons of fuel. This amounts to around 190 gallons of fuel per passenger seat. This meant that, on a per-seat basis, it was much more expensive to operate a Concorde plane. And the same thing held true for all other operational expenses. The Concorde's maintenance, parts and crew cost per passenger was much higher because of its 120-seat configuration. And to make up for these expenses, the airline had to charge higher prices for people wanting to fly on the Concorde. In fact, on average, a round trip from London to New York would cost around $12,000, 30% higher than what a first-class ticket would cost on other planes. This meant that the Concorde was only serving a very niche group of people who had access to that kind of money. So, scaling by operating more Concorde planes was never really feasible because the number of people who could afford to ride it was so limited. In the 1960s, the US Air Force ran a test of sonic booms over Oklahoma City. The purpose of the test was to understand whether flying a jet at supersonic speeds would cause any disruption to residents. And Oklahoma City residents reported hundreds of instances of broken windows and major noise disturbances. This test led to limiting supersonic flight to above the ocean, meaning that the Concorde was not allowed to go supersonic whenever it was flying above land. This effectively ruled out using these planes to connect cities within a single continent, such as New York and Los Angeles. This led to massive limitations in demand for Concorde planes. This test was also part of what squashed the American supersonic experiment with Boeing. British Airways and Air France, the two airlines using Concorde planes, also had to constantly use idle Concords. So, in case the original Concorde plane cannot take off due to maintenance issues, they can use the spare plane instead. However, this resulted in massive costs because an idle Concorde was very expensive. But despite all these issues, the Concorde kept going until catastrophe hit.
On July 25, 2000, Air France Flight 4590, the Concorde jet leaving from Paris to New York, crashed shortly after takeoff. During takeoff from Charles de Gaulle Airport, the aircraft ran over debris on the runway, causing a tire to explode and disintegrate. Tire fragments, launched upwards at great speed by the rapidly spinning wheel, violently struck the underside of the wing, damaging parts of the landing gear, thus preventing its retraction and causing the integral fuel tank to rupture. Large amounts of fuel leaking from the rupture ignited, causing a loss of thrust in the left-hand side engines 1 and 2. The aircraft lifted off, but the loss of thrust, high drag from the extended landing gear and fire damage to the flight controls made it impossible to maintain control. The jet crashed into a hotel in nearby Gonessa two minutes after takeoff. All 100 passengers on board, nine crew members and four people in the hotel were killed. It was the only fatal Concorde accident during its 27-year operational history. In the wake of the disaster, the entire Concorde fleet was grounded. It returned to service on November 7, 2001, but by then the 9-11 attacks and the economic downturns had massively impacted the aviation industry. Demand for flying plummeted and the Concorde fleet never recovered. Seeing the gloomy situation, the Concorde was finally retired by Air France in May 2003 and by British Airways in November of the same year. From an airline perspective, the Concorde was not an impossible-to-run airplane. In fact, the Concorde planes brought approximately £500 million in after-tax profits for British Airways during their 20-plus years of operations. This means that operationally, the Concorde was a financially sustainable airplane. In fact, BA was open to continue operating the airlines beyond 2003. But the problem arose when we took into account the cost of upgrading these planes. By 2003, the Concords were already aging when compared to newer planes. Concords had analog controls and required flight engineers, features that were already updated in newer airplanes. Airbus, the French manufacturer responsible for maintaining the Concorde, estimated it would have to spend £40 million on maintenance over the next two to five years to keep Concorde flying. Because of this, they had decided to stop supporting the Concorde, which ultimately led to British Airways and Air France retiring these planes.